Hey everyone, this is a little guide how to set up your charts with Blotec indicators on AMP MetaTrader 5. The reason why I say MetaTrader 5 is because many of my traders uh, trade futures exclusively. There are certain steps that you need to go through and uh, many of you like to follow you know, the way I set my charts. So I just wanted to basically show you how to do all of this. To get this market watch, you would either go to view market watch or you can press control M. So if I go control M, control M, it takes it away or it puts it back. This is where you're going to look for your contracts. So you have to always make sure that you're trading the front month contract on futures. For example, right now, here we have crude oil, which is a contract CLEF 21. So what does that mean? If I go to the contract itself here and I hover over it, you will see that the contract is crude light January 2021 expiry. If the front month contract is not in this list yet, then you're going to have to add it. How you do that? Right click symbols and then you want to type in whatever you want to trade. So for example, if you want to trade crude, Crude oil is going to give you all of the crude oil contracts. So, you know, you're going to have to check with CME on the volumes and stuff and see which one has the highest volumes. That is your front month contract. If you want to trade NASDAQ, type in NASDAQ and you're going to get uh, the symbol, but also the description of what it actually is. So MetaTrader in this regard is actually quite transparent. If you want to trade S&P 500, you would actually type S&P. And then it gives you a whole bunch of stuff. And here it is, E mini S&P. Here's a micro. So if you're trading micros, it's MES. And if you want to switch it on so that it's available in your market watch, you're going to have to double click this dollar sign. And then it's going to turn up here. See that? So if I go like that, it disappears. If I double click again, it reappears. So that's how you find your contract, slap it on market watch, and then you can drag out a chart, chart window. There we are. All right, next up, you have this grayed out CLE contract. That is actually a continuous contract. So I'm just going to go into here and show you what that looks like. Now, the monthly contracts will have a limited history. If I show you the difference between this monthly chart, so I've just changed it to monthly, you will see that this current front month contract only has about six months of previous data, whereas the continuous one has pretty much all of it. You can go back. Now, the first thing to realize with MetaTrader is that each time you open up a new chart, so each time you do this right click chart window, you will get a brand new instance of this chart. So it's going to be like opening up two different files. If I now want to add the indicators onto this chart, each time you drop an indicator onto it, MetaTrader will create a separate instance of that indicator as well. So for example, if I go to my market area in this navigator, and if you don't have the navigator, you can get it on view navigator or by pressing control N. So if I just go control N, it takes it away. Control N brings it back. Every product that you've purchased on the market, including our Blotic indicators, will be located in this subsection here called Innovatively Market. <laughs> so now, if I want to drop my Blotic market profile onto the chart, you have to click and drag it and then drop it. And this is what comes up. You will have these inputs with a whole bunch of stuff. Some of these things might need to be adjusted. Depends on what you're trading. For example, this is a crude oil contract, CL, which typically trades NYMEX hours. Our default session start is 2.30. So anytime you have a product that trades outside of those regular trading hours, you need to change that. So for example, on London time, NYMEX hours start at 2 p.m which means I have to change this right away. If you're using MetaTrader 4 and Blotic Market Profile, we have actually hard coded some of these abbreviations and names of symbols to automatically recognize the hours that they should be trading. Uh, with futures and with stocks, 
it's very hard to do that because you have other products that start with CL. So for example, you would have CL, which is a Colgate stock. So obviously that will still trade the normal New York hours rather than NYMEX. So this is the reason why we haven't been able to hard code this. So this is one of the first things that you will need to adjust if you're trading commodities. So either crude oil or gold or silver. In case of gold or silver, they, they actually start even earlier, half an hour earlier than NYMEX. So this would be your setting. Another thing that you may need to check if you're not using AMP MetaTrader 5, but you're using you know another broker that is maybe located somewhere else rather than the UK, then you will have to see what your local time is and compare it to the actual server time. And how do you do that? Well, you're going to go down to an hourly candle and you're going to take a crosshair. Now crosshair, here it is. So if you go to this candle, current candle, it's going to show you at the very bottom. So if you see here, all the way at the bottom, it's going to show you the start time of the candle. Compare that time with your local time. So for example, now in London, it's 7.30 p.m. at night. And this also says this is the candle for 7 p.m. This means that this broker is using the real-time servers. And that's why we don't need to adjust anything else. It makes it much easier. It's the same thing with something like JFD brokers and I think LCG. But for any other broker that uses a different time, so for example, you will get Darwin X maybe that has a server time that is two hours in front. So when you hover over the candle, this candle will say 9 p.m. 2100. If this is the case, you will have to make an adjustment in the indicators to ensure that the automatic sessions that we have set in place are actually opening at the right time. So, so how do you do that? You will right click on the chart and you will go to indicator list you will find the indicator that you want to change and you will click into properties. Then you will scroll all the way down to this GMT offset area. So all the way down, just keep scrolling until you reach the end. So the way you will control how the indicator behaves and when it's supposed to start the sessions relating to these session schedules, you will do that here. Now, when you click into GMT offset, you need to put in the amount of offset that you want in seconds. So if you want to move the indicator start time by one hour, you will have to put in 3600. That's 60 seconds times 60. For something like Darwin X, usually this offset will have to sit at 7200 because it's got a two hour offset. Any other server that is maybe behind, then you will have to put a minus, which will push it backwards. Then you have another setting here that says GMT offset use daylight savings. What this does, it will switch on or off the daylight savings time. Some countries still observe daylight savings. And in, you know, in that case, you, you're going to have an even bigger disparity between your local time and server time. The next thing that you may need to adjust for some of the more crazy instruments is the TPO size. So here it is. So you go all the way back up and you find TPO size parameter. What this does, when it's set to zero, it will attempt to automatically find the tick value for the TPOs. Sometimes this works well, but other times when you have a very, very large day, it's not going to be able to display the, the letters nicely and neatly. And this is always a problem with all market profile indicators on any platform. And in that case, you will have to compress the tick amount. Okay, so here we have gold. If I show you the profile, this, this thing is unreadable, right? You, you're not going to know which letter is doing what. So if this is the case, the very first thing to try, press your letter T on your keyboard two or three times. What this does is it attempts to compress the TPO size. So instead of using one TPO per tick, it's going to use three or four ticks per TPO before it creates the next one. If this still doesn't work and you've pressed letter T up to three times, you press it once, twice, three times. If it's still not legible, you know, and it still looks all jumbled up like this, then you're going to have to change the TPO size manually. So let me show you how to do that. Go back to your indicator list 
double click on your indicator you want to change or click into properties it does the same thing go to this TPO size area double click here and then start messing around with the size of the TPO on gold a good uh, good starting point is 0.5 so if you click OK you will get this quite a compressed profile now and and then the rest of the the loop that compresses the profile even more it's going to use that the the default TPO size that you've now set manually as the starting point for the loop if you get uh, an equity index you may have to put this TPO size to 1 or to maybe two or even three on some very very large days this would be the case with nasdaq or es or sometimes uh, dax also likes to do that silver natural gas okay moving on now on my chart i typically have about four blatic indicators so market profile is one supply and demand is another your indicators that you bought from Blatech will be in this market section, right? But I have this, you know, special one where we use development versions. So anyways, supply and demand, you just drag it. So you click and drag and you can drag it on the actual chart wherever you want. That's going to put the zones and this Blatech supply and demand panel here. If you want to remove this HUD, press H until it's gone. If you want to add daily range onto your chart, now for average daily range and for Fisher Transform, what you're going to have to do is drag the average daily range indicator into this market profile area. So not on the chart here, but instead in this little indicator window here. Okay, so let's do that. Click, drag, drag it into the window and drop, press OK. Now, if I didn't do that, so if I just remove it and if I just dragged it and then dropped it anywhere on the chart, what's going to happen is that it's going to create an additional window. So now when you go right click indicator list, you're going to have indicator window one, indicator window two. We don't want that. It looks messy. It compresses the, the candlesticks. It's, it just doesn't look as, as neat. So this is why you're going to have to click, drag, drop the ADR into this window, and that's it. Same goes for any kind of volume-based indicators, Fisher Transform, a whole bunch of other things. So for example, if you get better volume, you drop it in here, it's going to display the volumes. Same thing with, with Fisher Transform. I take Fisher Transform, we're going to drop it into the same window, and it's just going to overlay everything here. So to me, this is just a better way to kind of just have all of these indicators that have histograms and some letters and, you know, some other information. So rather than having one, two, three, four, five, like a million indicator windows below my main chart, everything is just neatly compressed into this just one window. Obviously, it's a matter of choice, but I get a lot of questions about, oh, how do you set your chart to look the way it does? Now, let me just go quickly through a market profile and how, how to kind of clean things up when you first drop it on the chart and I'll tell you why in a minute because when you first drop it in you're gonna get other sessions displayed as well so if you don't want that if you just want to see the current sessions so for example I'm in New York session now press the forward slash button on your keyboard that's going to get rid of all of the other sessions and it's only going to stay with the active session. Blatic Market Profile Indicator has this automatic switch. When the new session begins, it's going to start automatically. If you then don't want to have this overlay, because this is the same information here that you've got here, only in a you know, slightly more graphical display. Personally, I quite like having it there because it shows me whether the initial balance has been broken or not. But if you don't want that, you can press letter N for November and keep pressing it until you get rid of the graphic overlay. Similarly, when you first open up the ADR chart, you're going to get all of these lines. You're going to get the 0.5 DR and you're going to get the full average daily range exhaustion. These are two different measures right now because we're having a bit of a quiet day. Uh, it hasn't really moved much, but if I go back and I show you another day, these two measures will be quite different and quite far apart. And then one of them is dynamic, the other one isn't. So if you only want to see just these dotted lines, then keep pressing letter A 
until you only get the display of average daily range. This is the full 24 hour daily range. If you want to see the 0.5 DR, you can press A again and it's going to show up. And that's pretty much it. That's how I set my charts. The only other thing that I have on my chart is the uh, candle timer. This is free, so anyone can download it and install it. And it just helps me to see how much until the end of the current TPO or end of the current candle. And it keeps me from doing stupid things like executing a trade before the candle is finished. <laughs> For the final part of this video, um, I'm just going to say once you set up the indicators that you want on the chart, there is a way to save this entire template. So remember, this is all separate instances of these indicators. So if you go to another chart and you drag the indicator again, that creates a different instance of the indicator. But you can save a template. So if you want to do that, right click, templates, save template, type in, you know, I don't know, D2020, or you can call it whatever you want. Save it. Yes. So theoretically, let's say you're working for a prop firm and you have another platform over there. You then want to slap on your templates without messing around with separate indicators again. You need to find where your template is. Now, because I'm using the same computer, same area where I saved my template before, I can see it in this list. If you email the template to yourself and you're using another computer, then obviously you're going to have to go to this load template, find the folder uh, where you've saved the template, where you downloaded it and then load it up. Okay. But for now, I just need to do this. And there you are. I have my template from earlier and uh, obviously it's going to have some default settings unless you have a set file. Um, you can have this separate set file with all of your custom parameters and you know any customizations that you've done. But if you don't have a set file, then the template is going to revert back to some defaults. However, some of the presets that you've customized will be saved. So for example, if I go right click indicator lists and go into MT5, you will see that my custom TPO schedule that I changed to be 1330 for the COMEX session start, that's still there. Okay. And same thing with TPO size is going to be the same thing with this GMT offset and a whole bunch of other settings. The only thing that is different here is the fact that it displays and it defaults to all the sessions. So once again, you're going to have to press the forward slash key to get rid of other sessions if that's what you want. And that's it. That's how I set my charts. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.